Starting with a live look at Dillon Reservoir Whoa. this morning. Beautiful morning up in the Colorado high country, yes. right? And it might be a little bit cooler up there, but it's still going to be warm, I have a feeling, and it's going to be warm down here, too. The headline that impacts everything we do is weather, and we broke a record yesterday, and it doesn't look like it's going to get a whole lot cooler today. I think we broke a few records yesterday, right, Ed? Yeah, we did. We had the warmest morning low that we've ever had for that date and the warmest high we've ever had. It's so on both ends of the day. It was my milder than normal. So it was just a hot day all around topped off at 100 degrees and that did set a new record. The old with 99 set only two years ago. Here's what we've got going on right now. Just a few clouds scattered around 73 degrees. So still on the mild side. We had a few showers and thunderstorms that have left the uh, state and we've had sunny skies behind it. That's what we will see this morning and then the showers and thunderstorms are back again this afternoon. Tomorrow same deal. Sunny skies early showers and thunderstorms late in the day once again. So that's the forecast. 90 97 degrees today chance for a scattered storm 93 tomorrow same deal scattered storms on Thursday with 97 degrees. Let's just do 98 on Friday. Also chance of a late day storm. New video shows the moments following Sunday morning shooting in Lodo where five people were injured after Denver police fired at a suspect. Denver police say officers shot the suspect, but they may have also hit bystanders. Nine News reporter John Glasgow is live in Lodo this morning. John, a witness on scene says she didn't hear police give any warning before firing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ariana Morris, she says that she saw the altercation between Jordan Waddy and a group prior to the shooting. She says that things escalated quickly once Denver police arrived on the scene. She also shared some video that's pretty disturbing to watch in the moments following the shooting. Take a look at this. Now, this is uh, just outside of Larimer Beer Hall on 20th and Larimer. It's about 1.30 in the morning on Sunday, just as the bars are preparing to close. You can see a man on the ground who appears to be in handcuffs. Ariane says that she heard at least five gunshots. Now, in the video, she then walks around a food truck to find a woman bleeding on the sidewalk. We're choosing not to show that video because it's too graphic. We seen the altercation with Jordan and some people that were coming out of the bar. Police were kind of just walking up, just, you know, just walking up. And they're just looking first. And when Jordan, like, starts to yell and stuff, police starts to yell. And then next thing you know, I just hear firearm just going off. So Denver police say that Jordan Waddy, a 21 year old man, pointed a handgun at officers. He was taken to Denver Health and is expected to survive. Now, Waddy is facing charges of felony menacing and possession of a weapon by a previous offender. The department says it does not appear that he fired his weapon. Now, Denver police are expected to provide an update possibly tomorrow or later on this week. They say that they do need some time to go through the body cam footage that the officers are wearing and also talk to some of the witnesses that were in the area. John, do we know any more about the five other people that were hurt? Well, not a lot, Corey. In fact, uh, we asked Denver police the condition of those people. They say that they're expected to survive, but we don't know the extent of the injuries that some of those people sustained. Uh, we don't also know whether or not they were hit by bullets or possibly by shrapnel, which Denver police say might have happened as well. Yeah, still a lot of questions. All right, John, thank you for the update. We have learned the names of the mother and the daughter who died in Friday's flash flood in Larimer County. Family and friends say Lisa Schilling and her 12 year old daughter, Lilia Guello, uh, died when flooding swept away their camp trailer. Schilling was a fourth grade teacher at Dean Elementary School in Lakewood. If you would like to help the family, they have a fundraiser going. We have the information at 9news.com. The former Aurora officers and paramedics facing charges in the death of Elijah McLean tried to get their cases tossed out. A judge ruled the trials will move forward. McLean died almost three years ago after an encounter with police and paramedics. He was walking down the street doing nothing wrong when officers stopped him and paramedics injected him with ketamine. He later died at a hospital. The officers and paramedics asked to get their cases tossed, saying the evidence wasn't strong enough. A judge disagreed and said the trial will move forward. Stand with us or against us, because we ain't going nowhere. Parents made their voices heard at the first Uvalde school board meeting since the release of a report on Robb Elementary School shooting. That report found systematic failure and poor decision making by law enforcement and by the school district. Parents and one student called for action and accountability, especially for the Uvalde School District Police Chief Pete Arandondo. He remains on paid administrative leave, but he did resign from his city council seat. 
We are also learning a little bit more about the mass shooting near Indianapolis. A gunman opened fire inside Greenwood Park Mall's food court, killing three people and injuring several others. Police say a man armed with a legal handgun then shot and killed the shooter. The suspect entered the food court and spent more than an hour in a restroom before he went out and started shooting. The victims <clears throat> included a married couple and a 30 year old man. The gunman charged with killing 10 black people in a racially driven mass shooting at a New York uh, Buffalo, New York supermarket pleaded not guilty to federal hate crime charges Monday. The shooter was indicted last Friday. The Justice Department said a decision on whether to seek the death penalty against the shooter would come later. The sentencing trial of the Parkland school shooter is now underway. Family members of the victims heard opening statements on Monday. The suspect shot and killed 17 people and wounded 17 others at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in 2018. The now 23 year old pleaded guilty last October. Jurors must now decide between a death sentence or life in prison without parole. This is the deadliest shooting to reach trial in U.S. history. The Supreme Court agreed to move quickly on deciding whether teens in Indiana can get abortions privately. At issue is a state law that requires parents to be notified if a patient under 18 years old seeks an abortion. Lower courts invalidated that law, citing Supreme Court precedent. The state asked the justices to review the matter last year, but now with Roe v. Wade overturned, Chief Justice John Roberts granted Indiana's request to bypass normal procedures and expedite a hearing. The House will vote this week to codify a decades-old Supreme Court ruling relating to contraception. The 1965 Griswold versus Connecticut decision protected the right of married couples to buy and use contraceptives without government restriction. Conservative Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas has suggested the current court might revisit that issue. The House vote is unlikely to pass the Senate. The House says it also plans to vote to codify a 2015 ruling allowing for same-sex marriage. In Colorado, Heidi Ganahl's Republican campaign for governor is looking to make history with her running mate selection. Danny Moore would be the third black lieutenant governor in Colorado, but he would be the first election denier ever to hold the position. Jordan Chavez joins us from the newsroom, and Jordan Ganahl claims that he's not an election denier, but there is plenty of proof that he's been pushing conspiracy theories. Yeah, and Gary, that actually ended up losing him a leadership position with Republicans. Uh, Moore was actually removed as chair of the Independent Congressional Redistricting Committee, the group that redrew those boundaries for the state's expansion to eight congressional districts. Now, this was all sparked by this post right here. Back on January 7th, 2021, Moore posted on social media that the election of 20 2020 will go down as the most questioned in our country's history and mail-in ballots can be controlled by the people you give them to like the postman and ballot counters. Well, after Nine News is reporting on those posts, the committee voted to remove him as chairman. Now, the other reason Ganahl's announcement yesterday is raising some eyebrows is that Moore was not the person Ganahl mentioned as her soon to be running mate during an interview. Now, earlier this month, when the teasing that announcement on conservative talk radio, Ganahl said her choice was actually a very strong Hispanic leader from rural Colorado. Can all appear to be describing this man here, Los Animas County Commissioner Felix Lopez. When asked by Nine News, he said himself that he was talking with Ganahl about the job. Moore, of course, is a black man from Centennial. Ganahl briefly spoke about that change on KOA Radio on Monday. We were moving forward in that direction, and then um, we had to make a, a different shift because um, of some family issues that were going on. But, um, you know, I think I think we've got an incredible choice here. So if elected, Moore would be the third black lieutenant governor in Colorado. And Ganahl and Moore are scheduled to make their first appearance together on Wednesday at a restaurant in Aurora, Gary. All right, Jordan, thank you much. We'll see what happens.